welcome back to the channel happy new year's eve because today is new year's eve but happy new year's to you guys who are watching this video this is the first video of 2021 day in the life what's up happy new year 2021 well this is future it is not 2021 yet but hey you guys today i decided to vlog because it's a very busy big day last night i got off of work at 5 a.m and i'm going to work tonight at 8 p.m 8 p.m to 6 30 a.m it's the new year's graveyard shift so i do get paid time and a half so yay but today is also my cousin's wedding and we are going to his wedding in about an hour and a half so i'm going to get ready take you along on the day with me as you can see do you like my hair <laughs> this is my cute new mini mouse robe that i got for christmas and uh, we're about to get ready go to the wedding and then from the wedding we're gonna go to work so i hope you guys enjoy this video i hope you guys are excited for this new year just as much as i am and yeah let's get started let's get ready because i gotta go thank you guys for being here i hope we all have a great year together all right see you later scrubs for tonight and my jacket some socks i think that's it i'll have to get my badge and then i'll be ready for work tonight yay and what's up with the um clouds it's cloudy outside with a chance of meatballs yes with chances of meatballs what's up everybody we're on our way <laughs> to the wedding here's the do you think there'll be meatballs at the wedding there probably will be meatballs at the wedding Hi, Kaya. Hi. <laughs> Say hi. We are going to the wedding. And apparently the wedding's outside. And it's really gray and cloudy outside, y'all. Look. It's cloudy. No, it's, that's just a tin on the window. <laughs> Because you know, I got work tonight. <laughs> I'm actually really hungry because I woke up, got ready, and now we're here. I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> Are you hungry, babe? Yeah. Yeah. Yummy. All right, you guys, we're leaving the wedding party early. Babes is taking me to work. He's gonna pick me up in the morning at 6:30 a.m. Thank you, babe. <laughs> So we're going this to. Is a oh. <laughs> I lost. We're gonna go hopefully see if any coffee places open. I'm not sure if they are, but then we're gonna go to work. Yay! Thank you, babe. Yay! Vanilla latte. Woo! What's up, you guys? We made it to work, and today on the schedule there is 24. We're gonna just go through the night. Do what we can. Hopefully we'll get a second at midnight to say woo by 2020. And yeah, I'm gonna tell you guys about all the patients that I do. Obviously not their names, HIPAA, privacy, but we are going to talk about the exams in a little bit more details because you guys like those. And I love that you guys wanna learn and know things. That is why we do this here. So let's see what our first exam will be today. All right, so first one of the night I did so far was a really difficult carotid ultrasound. And a carotid ultrasound is an ultrasound of your carotid arteries in the neck to see the blood flow from your heart to your brain. These arteries connect like highways and they are 
the blood flow that goes through your face and to your brain. And a lot of times they ordered this on stroke patients, patients who have syncopal episodes, such as like falling, patients who have heart issues. They want to see if they have any plaque, stenosis, and this guy was really hard. He has a really big neck. His vessels are really small and pretty much we are dopplering them to make sure that the blood flow is good. But this guy's got a lot of plaque and you know, I stood there, you know, trying to figure out what was the ECA versus what was the ICA. So when you're unsure of things, you know, Doppler it at different angles and Doppler meaning get the velocity and the blood flow. So the machine gives us a number that tells us you know how high or how elevated the blood flow is to the brain and stuff this is all vascular stuff and it's pretty cool i love doing carotids i love vascular it's a pretty easy exam but when you get difficult patients like this it could take a little while and then your arm can hurt because it's in this position for forever and you're trying to figure out what vessels are what but all you can do is really tweak tweak the probe it's the way you angle the probe everyone's vessels are different they can be tortuous, which means like they could be really small, they could be really big, people's necks can be really big, people can be really skinny. All you have to do is do your best and learn all the techniques that you can in lab to focus on how to angle and get the correct artery. So for external carotid arteries, a lot of times those are smaller and they are more angled towards medially, towards the face, and a lot of times the internal carotid arteries are more lateral and away. And sometimes they're bigger too. You know, you can't always use those, but for the most part, ICAs are bigger and ECAs are smaller. Study, study, study on vascular. Carotids are really good to learn how to hold the probe and use slight movements in angling to find the correct picture that you need. So they ordered an abdomen intussusception over at the PEDS ER and the patient isn't ready yet. So I have to wait for the patient. So I'm gonna wait and grab a snack. I'm back from scanning that abdomen for intussusception. It was a one-year-old and I did not see intussusception, but they had a lot of fluid-filled bowel. And what an intussusception looks like has a pretty distinct feature on ultrasound. It pretty much looks like a rounded circle in transverse. What they will say is like the donut sign. Looks literally like a donut, rounded donut. And what an intussusception is, is when the bowel telescopes within one another, kind of like folding into each other. And then it blocks things from traveling through the bowel. It, can cause a lot of pain, it can cause a lot of vomiting, and it is very much so seen in kids, babies. So that's why we scan babies who have been vomiting a lot. We'll scan them and check if they have intussusception. So I'm gonna show you guys here what an intussusception looks like under ultrasound. It's very distinct, rounded circle in trans. And then in Sag, it kind of looks almost like a kidney but it's not it's just in the shape you know kind of like oblong 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 so in trans it's a complete circle but in sag it's kind of like pancakey kidney shaped like this and they're very easy to find usually once you see one it's just like bam there it is but obviously there are always those cases that are hard and difficult to see but especially if like a baby is crying but for the most part you can see them right away like boom there's an intussusception so really don't try to find it if you are really having a hard time trying to find it it should just hey i'm here it's a little donut sign <laughs> so she did not have one thank goodness but also x-ray is a good way to visualize if there is an intussusception so there will usually be an ultrasound ordered and an x-ray ordered for baby happy new year everybody Woo! so uneventful but yay you guys i just finished an abdomen ultrasound and she has gallstones which are stones in the gallbladder. But as I was walking back after my exam, 12 o'clock hits and it's so cute. Everyone's like, happy new year, happy new year. They enter comment over the intercom. Everyone's saying happy new year, it's so cute. And then they're like, happy new year, get back to work. <laughs> so honestly, it's actually pretty busy right now. I have six stats at the moment and it's just me. So bye you guys. I'll see you in a little bit, okay? Happy new year again. I hope you guys all had an amazing New Year's. I know this year was crazy, but literally, life is what you make of it. Be positive, you guys. Hey, 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 we all got this. It's gonna be a better year, because we're gonna make it a better year, okay?
holy heckin' Bob, y'all, is there a full moon tonight? Because literally it's 3 a.m. I just finished catching up, ton of stats. And you know, I couldn't really talk to you guys about each one of them because it's just so busy. But I did have twins at the stroke of midnight. Basically I had some twins, both were 11 weeks. And then I had a polycystic ovarian disease case. She was in a lot of pain, nausea, vomiting. And then after that, I had a motor vehicle accident, class two trauma, pregnant woman with twins, back to back twins. You guys, that barely ever happens. I barely get twins. And then to have two twins in the same night, plus the PCOS patient, plus gallstones in that abdomen, plus hydronephrosis on kidneys. It has been one crazy night. I feel like I get either a crazy night that I tell you guys about when I decide to vlog and it's just my luck. <laughs> so hopefully I can tell you guys a little bit more about them later. If not, maybe future videos. If you guys want to know things like that, comment down below. I really am just like, holy heckin' Bob, this is insane. I haven't gone to lunch yet, but I'm hopefully gonna go to lunch soon. The time is going by really fast. I do get off at 6.30 and then I'm gonna sleep and then I'm gonna come again and do it all over again. <laughs> it is crazy tonight. DT is like busy. Like they are way busy. So I guess it could be worse for me, but twins, 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 they're hard. They take a while. You gotta know how many placentas there are. If there's two sacks, if there's one sack, if they're sharing the placenta, what position the baby is sitting in. So much fun, you guys. <laughs> Alright you guys, so because I know this video is going to already be pretty long, I'm just going to end the video here and talk about twin pregnancies since I've seen two of them tonight. With twin pregnancies, depending on the gestational age, which if they are in the first, second, or third trimester, you're going to have a limited pregnancy ultrasound in the hospital. Now with that being said, usually in the hospital, in my hospital, because every hospital is different. We do a limited exam and we check for estimated fetal weight, the estimated fetal date, the gestational age. We check to see how many placentas there are for the twins, if there's one or two. We check to see if there's two sacs, one or two for twins. And we check the femur leaf, the abdominal circumference. We check heart rate and we check head circumference and biparietal diameter. Also checking the fluid for AFI. And then we also check fetal position, cervix length, did I say heart rate? Yeah, we check the uterus, adnexal regions, ovaries if we can see them. But pretty much we wanna just know the basics, make sure baby is okay, make sure the size and dates are correct, what the weight is. Because we are not a dedicated OB facility, we do have labor and delivery, but it's not dedicated. So we don't do like anatomy scans which is mainly in an OBGYN office or in an outpatient setting. So at my hospital, I don't know, I may have forgotten a couple things. I'll put it in the description box below what we look for in a pregnancy limited exam. But regardless, first trimesters versus second and third trimesters, our protocol is a little different and I'll go into depth with those in another video. But tonight with twins, I had to make sure that there are two amniotic sacs or if there's one amniotic sac, and then I had to make sure if there's two yolk sacs, I had to make sure if there's one or two placentas because there are different types of pregnancies. You have to make sure that you know if they are sharing a placenta or if they have two separate placentas. Are they sitting in the same sac or are there two different sacs? So there are names for this. And my first pair of twins, they were dichorionic diamniotic twins. And then the second ones I saw one sac and one placenta, so it was a monochorionic and monoamniotic gestational pair of twins. So that seems like a lot, it seems like a lot of big words, but honestly, it's really easy once you start to do OB classes and learn OB, mono, chorion, amnion, they all mean something. So using your medical terminologies, put them together and you get ultrasound, medical terminology. <laughs> And it's just, it's your basic anatomy. You learn all this in school, you learn it in lab, clinical, practice, practice, practice. We are scanning moving targets. Babies are hard. OB is a lot harder than people think. And when people go into ultrasound, they're like, babies. But really, they're the most difficult exams, in my opinion. So with that being said, I always check the heart rate first, make sure baby is alive and that there's fetal heart tones. And then I'll go to cervix, then I'll do all my measurements, check the fluid, placenta, check everything else, uterus, ovaries, if I need to. And then that's pretty much it. 
attach it. I end up with maybe around 30 to 45 images for one baby. When it comes to twins, there's definitely a lot more because you have to measure both and it takes a little bit longer. But you just explain to the mom that, you know, it takes a little bit longer because you got two of those little things inside of you. Yeah, so this was my crazy day. New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's, everyone. It is four o'clock. I had just finished my lunch and then I'm gonna do a couple more. Babes is gonna come pick me up. I'm gonna go home, sleep, and we're gonna do this all over again. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment below what else you wanna see. And we are gonna have so much fun this year, 2021. Another year, more videos, more ultrasound more positivity <laughs> and yeah thank you guys so much for being here i'm so happy so glad to have all of you along for the ride make sure you don't forget to hit the thumbs up button please like it and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed support me join the family and we'll see you guys as always in the next video stay positive be kind to one another and have an amazing new year bye guys